Hello! In this video, we're going to capture some data from the screen that the user types in, and then we're going to display it back to the screen. Really simple stuff, not complex at all. Eventually, what we're going to do is validate that data, save it to disk, and play around with some windows on the display. But that is for the future. That's where we'll get to eventually. Right, so here we are in Amos Professional. So uh, let's get going. Uh, so for my code, I'm using line numbers. So we'll start off with line 10 and we'll make this a rem statement. Uh, so rem stands for remark. So it's just a comment we can put in our code. So uh, rem, this is program for uh, my quick and dirty Amos, oh, Amos. Coding part one. So REM statements are not picked up by the program at all. They're not run, they don't get executed. So with this one, we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is create our screen. Uh, so I always like to have a, a high res screen. Um, so what we'll do, we'll open a screen by using the screen open command. This will be screen number one. It will be 640 by 300. Um, it will have 16 colors and it will be high res. So that gives me a nice tidy screen to work on. All these screen resolutions are in the AMOS manual, be it the AMOS 1.2 or 1.3 manual or the AMOS Pro manual. Uh, so we're going to initiate that screen. I'm going to set the background color to the screen, uh, the background color of the screen to black, which is the paper zero command, zero being the color for black. And then to make sure that that is actioned, we're gonna clear the screen by using the CLS command. So if I press F1 now, we should get a black screen with a flashing cursor. Good. Right, so next up, uh, line 50, we're going to position our text cursor on the screen. So it's positioned somewhere that's a little bit user friendly. So I'm using the locate command and we'll go one position across and two positions down. Uh, at line 60, we're gonna input our first bit of data or rather ask for our first bit of data and that will be uh, your name. So your name, please. And we'll give that a space after the question mark. So when we start typing, we don't type, we don't butter us up against that question mark. Semicolon, and we're going to assign whatever value is keyed in by the user to the value, to the variable name string. Okay, so we'll input that. Then what we're going to do just to test this, we're going to move the cursor one across and five down. And at line 80, we're going to print what the user has just keyed in. Your name is ba, 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 a semicolon name string. And something I do need to do, because this is affecting my OCD, I just need to change that to a lowercase. Right, so if I press uh, F1, we can run that. Your name, please. Your name is yawning. And that works nicely. So that's fundamentally the basics of input and output. But what we're going to do now is make some changes to this. We're gonna capture some more data. So let's um, change this uh, locate. Let's move this down a bit it's to one, line 170 and 180. And by pressing control and the right cursor key, I can zip to the end of a line in Amos. Uh, line 70, we're going to have input. Um, what is your favorite color? And we'll assign that to color string. We'll just give that a quick test by pressing F1. Oh, Ooh, syntax error. Uh, oh, yes, that's wrong. It's color string. Ah, so here's a great thing. Color is a reserved word in Amos, so we can't assign a variable name called color. 
um, because color is actually a command. It's used by Amos. So what we'll just do is uh, let's just call that C string for now. And we'll press F1. Name, yawning. What is your favorite color? Blue. So, and of course it's printed out the yawning bit underneath because that's all we've told it to, to print out. You'll notice that we've got an indent issue here, so I need to correct that. So what we can do, uh, line 65, uh, we can do a locate and we can just do, we want to come across one character, so one comma, and if we leave this blank, it should allow us, if I press F1, just to define the amount that we're indenting. Yeah, there we go, look at that. Cool. Right, and what we'll then do is uh, get to the end of that line, we'll do a line 80 and we'll locate one comma. And at line 90, we're going to input, um, and let's do something with uh, something numeric. What is your favorite number? Now this won't be a string, so we'll just call this uh, n hash to denote it's a number. So let's F1 and let's run through this. So name is yawning, favorite color is blue. Uh, what is your favorite number? It's seven. So there we go, we're capturing data, which is great stuff, it's all working. So next up, we're just gonna print that out in a little tidier fashion on the screen. Back in the code then, so let's play around and let's print this information out in a little bit of a tidier fashion. So this locate here, for the print, I'm gonna move that across. So um, I already know how far I need to move that over. So I'm gonna go 43 characters across and I wanna come two characters down and I'm gonna print uh, name and then at line 190, locate. Um, so I wanna go across 43 and leave, so that's my X coordinate, leave the Y coordinate blank. 200 print uh, your color was C string and at 210 um, we're going to do another locate 43 across again and we're going to do uh, line 220 oh no uh, 220 we're going to print um, your number was n hash Right, let's see if this works. So press F1 to run this program. And here we go. Yawning. Favorite color, blue. Uh, favorite number, seven. And there we go. As you can see here, there's all our data. Uh, yawning, blue, seven. And that is that. It is that simple to capture data and then display it back to the screen. Easy peasy. Before we end, we need to save this code so we can come back to it for our future lessons. So go into the project menu, select save as. Um, let me go into my Amos Pro source. I've got a vlogs folder here. And what we'll do, we'll call this, um, so, oops, uh, input, code one and we'll save that so that should have saved off um, what we can do with Amos we can flick back to the workbench you can click on this button here where you can do uh, left Amiga a which will switch us back to the workbench eventually there we go and I should have a copy of directory opus running so if I go into my vlogs folder there it is there's my input code all there ready for the next time. And we can use left Amiga A to switch back to Amos. And there it is. It's all there, all happy. Thanks for watching this. Hope you'll join me on the next one where we'll start to expand this code and start to do something interesting with it. We'll start to validate, um, check the data that's being put in. We'll think about writing this out to its own file. We'll change the screen around as well and play around with some windows. 
So if you want to keep up with that, uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you ever so much. Take care. Catch you on the next one.